Uh, so I'm Nora Tessem. Uh, I'm a consultant and full stack developer at Embrick, uh, which means that I mostly do backend, actually. I also have a background in usability and design. So I, um, I have very strong opinions about how things should look, but I don't particularly enjoy coding them. Um, and uh, I'm very into like abstraction, and I also have like a um, background in databases, which is the thing that I prefer to work with if I can. I'm currently hired at the, the in-house software department at Embrick, um, migrating legacy software, uh, collecting energy consumption data from private homes, um, little smart meters you all have at home to the cloud. Previously, I worked on uh, the analysis, analysis team, building s applications to improve the distribution grid. And um, in that capacity, I helped to build a Swiss Army knife of sorts to build simulations of the future energy consumption width that's supposed to be used by grid planners. Those are the people who decide how um, kind of your local distribution grid looks like, fuses and such. First, um, I actually want to acknowledge that in the era of remote working, uh, it's sometimes hard to get the quiet to have good ideas. I think at least this was conceived in like the old school whiteboarding setting where you spitball ideas together intensively in one moment and in the next you sit in silence contemplating after somebody discovers a caveat or something that needs mulling over for a moment. Remote work has its perks, but the kind of the safe silence of to ideate and to think things over and to not rush a solution isn't always there. I collaborated with Sindre Mehus, which is a consultant at Sienta on the following design, and I think we had a great time <laughs> coming up with it. <laughs> Maybe too much of a great time. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, calendars, what are they? Uh, everybody knows what a calendar is. It's kind of something you take for granted, right? It's to sort of track the passing of time. Uh, in the West, we have had several official calendars through the years. Uh, the Georgian calendar we have today superseded the Julian ca calendar, and many other civiliz civilizations have their own calendars again. In science and in sensor data, like I work with, we often use timestamp or epoch or Unix time, um, which is the continuous passing of every non-leap second since January 1st of 1970. We didn't really have a lot of computers before 1970s. We had some, but the bulk of them are after 1970s. Um, calendars are not just to keep track of time. It's also an observation of what happens in our environment. And uh, here we have the concept of the perpetual calendar, which uh, you sometimes has the name of the lunisolar cal calendar or the tropical year. And also, Primstav, the runic almanac, which some of you may know about, that we used to have in earlier Norway, it's a perpetual calendar as well. It's fixed. It kind of describes what happens through the seasons, and it has some holidays that are always on the same date. Tropical year, or the solar year, is what we experience on Earth. It's the seasons, it's the ellipses that and Earth takes around the Sun. It doesn't go add up mathematically. It's 365 days point 24, 22 days, and that's like five minutes and 45 minutes, and four, no, five hours and 45 minutes, and then again some. <laughs> it's not perfect, but the solar year is very used in agriculture and astronomy because it actually describes what happens around us. It's not just a proxy we use to track time. So it's like empirical facts encoded in a system. Um, our calendar today, the Gregorian one, doesn't add up to whole days and it's inconvenient to build time systems around. It has um, 
it has a solution for the fact that there's a remainder of a day, and that's called leap year. It's, uh, it was created um, in the Julian cal calendar, and it was revised in the Georgian calendar, and it still isn't perfect, and it's still causing a lot of bugs, actually. Um, getting back to the energy consum consumption. Um, grid planners um, uh, have to know what's going to happen with our energy consumption in order to sort of know where they're going to build up the distribution grid and so they had this idea that we just take what happened past and we just um, make it so that it happens in the future and then they could test their hypothesis on it and that was kind of the pr uh, product that we were going to create and because of that we had to make a very simple solution where we would just take the past energy expenditure and we just extrapolate it into the future and we do nothing with it. So they actually have a very uh, neutral ground. Of course, uh, the past is not neutral <laughs> when it comes to energy, ex energy expenditure because you can have outliers such as uh, weather you can have like a very cold year, and if you sample from that year, the next year, it doesn't actually uh, correctly represent uh, the future at all. But uh, this is something we chose to not care about, uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> in this phase of the project. We just wanted to do something that you could build on later, and then you can maybe implement some um, adjustment and weighting according to like if what the sample you the date that you sampled was from a particularly cold year or something like this. This is just like the um, like the really prototype for uh, energy consumption. Um, people do different activities with who that expends more power, uh, like cooking and washing, and also they have. Maybe they have an electrical car or something like this. And the people are creatures of habit, so they do the same things at the same time every day. And um, some people only go to work Wednesday, uh, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. So um, the day uh, a week really impacts how the, the power consumption data looks like. Uh, so what we chose to focus on was the day of week and the time of year, really. And then um, you could envision a solution where you just take one year and you just plus 365 days. What can go wrong? Well, if you do that, uh, you have the concept of a weekday drift your Sunday will become your Monday. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there is a leap year, then your Sunday will become a Tuesday after the leap day. And it's not very convenient. It doesn't really represent the fact that you use energy differently on different days. And of course, you can get around this by subtracting one day and subtracting two days, but after a while, uh, just like counting on your fingers, it gets very complex. Uh, <laughs> and it might not be it for like really tidy, uh, future, long-term, robust and flexible solutions. Um, uh, I personally don't like uh, indexed for loops, which would be like the maybe the solution to this. Um, I could say that I find this easier, but when developers say they <laughs> think something is easy and simple, they're just actually stating their preference. This is my preference. Uh, don't feel discouraged if you're of a dis different opinion. And also, there's probably some C programmers in the room that's going to think that this solution is incredibly inefficient. Um, but we build it to sort of be robust over time because um, what we were going to end up with was not very certain at the time. So we had to make sure that it was kind of easy to develop. And uh, when I say easy to develop, then maybe I'm not right because maybe it's very complex for some people. 
So instead, we opted for cool abstraction and math stuff. We want to avoid bugs and make the system easy to understand uh, over time. And um, I admit that maybe it's not that easy. Uh, but I wager it's uh, easier than keeping track of plus one and plus two and all of this stuff. And after five years, you're like, <laughs> plus. Uh, it's very hard to sort of break into a for loop like that. And you want to build that. So all of a sudden, you want to take account for uh, like if it's a holiday or something like that, because people, they cook it all day on Christmas Eve, and that really impacts the <laughs> <laughs> the graph or of their data. And um, so we um, kind of uh, ended up building on some kind of uh, database concepts. This is not a database talk, actually. You will see no databases here. Don't be discouraged. Um, or a cookbook, lo not, uh, cookbook logic. Uh, because in the back of a cookbook, you can kind of uh, look, at, look up several parameters of a recipe instead of like counting the, your pages. And uh, we had to kind of determine what it was going to be our key. Um, what time-related attributes determine energy consumption? Well, you have the time of year. We sort of uh, made that into month. And then you have the weekday and the hour. These are the objects. The key, month, weekday, hour, and then the value, load, which is like the kind of how much energy uh, the customer used at that time, sample from that date, and to make sure that we can do some calculations afterwards, I'm going to show you in a minute, we had to keep track of uh, which uh, day of year that was sampled for, because that can vary and which, how many days there were in that year. Because sadly, we're going to have to account for leap year. So this is the code. This is the code in a different formatting, because it didn't remove the previous slide. <laughs> and well, uh, this is how you instantiate the calendar. Uh, you sample a year of data and you put it into this constructor and it magically makes a calendar for you. So now this was the talk. No, I'm just kidding. It's not. Um, we heavily utilized um, Eclipse collections for this project uh, and on this proje uh, project as a whole. I uh, really recommend it. It's kind of based on small talk, but you see that there's like some elements of it that looks a lot like SQL. The group by, for instance. I'm going to show you another group by very soon. Anyway, uh, we cast all the timestamps into its respective values in our calendar system. That is on the previous slide. And then Eventually, you get the future consumption. Here, you send in a from timestamp into the future. Uh, so you take like maybe tomorrow, uh, the day tomorrow or the day today, and you say, I want like the previous two years of data extrapolated into the five years of the future. And then you get your result. But wait, how do we find the closest value? Um, when you have a Tuesday in April, uh, one year, that Tuesday in April may be like so much further out uh, the next year. And maybe the last Tuesday of March is actually very much closer to the day you want to extrapolate for. So we, when we calculate the value we're going to end up with in like two weeks in the simulation, for instance. We take um, the previous month, we take the current month that you are uh, calculating for, and you take the future month, and you bunch that all into a list. Okay? And then, um, then again, what is the day of year for? Well. If you take three 
uh, we, three months worth of data and you shove it into a list like we did, uh, you probably end up with around um, like 12 elements, maybe less. And then you want to, out of those 12 values, you want to determine which one is closest to the date you're trying to extrapolate for. And also you have to account for leap year. And you have to account for the fact that if you are trying to find January 1, then maybe uh, the day that is the closest to, to your date, like your Tuesday in January, is actually December, January. So your formula has to kind of wrap around 365 or 366, depending on the year. Enter cool math stuff. So usually when you try to wrap a circle, you use modular, right? Because uh, kind of the scale kind of ends at 365 or 366 in this case. And uh, here I made a great mistake of uh, uh, future-proofing the code. Because um, uh, you actually don't need modulo for this. Modulo is uh, the best to use when you actually have a circle that is always the same and not sometimes a different circle. Uh, but I kind of accounted for that in the math. <laughs> And uh, just for, for fun, I had uh, ChatGPT re rewrite uh, this uh, formula for this uh, presentation, and it worked for the one sample I tested before doing this uh, presentation. And it's probably a whole lot e easier to understand, I think, than this, but uh, it looks so much cooler, and nobody's going to dare touch this before <laughs> <laughs> the time of chat GPT, so I'm pretty pleased that it, it, it exists and uh, it will maybe protect the future generations from the insanity of wanting to use math in certain circumstances where it's actually not that needed. <laughs> okay, so we have the last piece of the puzzle here is, yeah, you have all the values and then you group it by the get distance is over there. This is get distance. It's like the distance between two days, right? Um, I'm not going to blame you if you sit here like <laughs> and don't understand anything. Don't feel stupid. Don't just don't. I'm stupid. Okay. And then you group by the distance, and then you get like, okay, this day, this Tuesday in April is this many days away from the Tuesday in April. You're trying to figure out this uh, day in March is like two days away from the. Tuesday in April, you're trying to figure out, right? You group it by that and you take the minimum value. It's over there. Let's see. Oh, it's a very, sh very bad laser. Anyhow, anyway, let's see there. Uh, you group by this and you get like 1, 5, 11, 340, and so on. And if you get no answer, you get a zero. Uh, it's very unlikely that that's going to happen over 12 values, right? Uh, but if you, uh, if you have an erroneous uh, like time, maybe that's going to happen. And then you group by over here, and then you select the smallest one. And when you have selected the smallest one, there is a, there is a chance that you might get several values, as especially if you're sampling sev several years. And then you do an average. And if that doesn't y yield anything as well, you get a zero. Uh, it's probably never going to happen, but it's nice to account for it in your code. And uh, I, I don't want to push the burden of uh, like uh, getting a null pointer to the people who are maintaining this code today. Um, yeah. Uh, and the reason why I'm choosing to make it a zero is because then it will be very obvious to the person who is running the simulation that something went wrong. And you want uh, to at least have some kind of transparency around the things when you're making stuff like this. So what's missing? Well, very, ma very, very many things. <laughs> This uh, doesn't actually account for the fact that you can have like missing timestamps, right? And then you can end up with like the Tuesday in March, even though there was like a two o'clock uh, measurement in April, and maybe that's more <laughs> correct. But also, if 
the two o'clock one was a very was a big outlier. You would have like a two hour stretch of like really high power consumption. So you want to account for that. Also, this doesn't use like uh, statistics at all, and they're very prone to weather overfitting. For instance, uh, when you have like a, a Siberian winter year, you don't want to assume that uh, f you're going to have five years of Siberian winter. I would not like to have that at least. And um, there are societal factors that you can predict, pandemics, war, inflation, bank crisis, general strikes, many things that change the way we behave. It's really hard to predict the future. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this talk. Um, if you want to talk uh, to me about anything, I'm very game when it comes to that. And I'm interested in a lot of stuff, but uh, I care deeply about databases like Willow here. Uh, and uh, that's it. Thank you.